Hi there! So you're interested in automatic lip syncing for your voxel character? Well, if what you're trying to achieve looks like what you're watching right now, then I may be able to help you out. All you need to do is to keep watching this video. First of all, you need to download the Rhubarb Lip Sync add-on for Blender. You will find the link in the description. To install it, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons and click Install. Select the file you just downloaded and activate the add-on. According to the add-ons creator, if you plan on using it for English dialogue, you should choose the Pocket Sphinx recognizer. If you are going to be using it for other languages, select the phonetic one. Some time ago, I created this voxel model to act as my avatar for my retro review show. I will double it in size. I will need the extra space for when I'll be creating the mouth shapes. I will be using these references for the mouth shapes. The pixel art editor that I'm using is called A-Sprite and it comes with a fee, but it is an essential tool for any pixel artist and in my opinion, it's well worth the 20 US dollars. However, there are decent free alternatives such as Piskel. I'll leave a link in the description. I measure the size of my model's mouth area and then create a canvas of the same size on a sprite. I create one layer for the background and another on top of it for the actual mouth shapes. I test the shapes on my model first to make sure that they will actually look normal on his face. I then copy the results to a sprite. I export each mouth shape 10 times its size naming it accordingly. Let's move on to Blender. Delete the default cube and the light and go to front orthographic view. Press Ctrl plus Alt plus Numpad 0 to bring the camera to this view and in the camera settings change its type to orthographic. Go to the render properties. Expand the film options and check the transparent box. Time to import the mouth shapes. Press Shift plus A to add a new object and add an image as plane. Select the first mouth shape, which is A. In the camera settings, increase the orthographic scale value until the object is large enough. Now go to the shading tab. Connect color to emission and bring the base color brightness all the way down. This way, your image will have a shadeless material. Then, change the interpolation from linear to closest, to get rid of that blurry look. Unfortunately, you need to repeat the same process for all remaining mouth shapes. Select object A and go to its data properties. Add two shape keys. Name the second one A. With shape key A selected, press Tab to go into edit mode and then S and 0 to set its scale to 0. Go back into object mode and increase the shape key's value all the way up to 1. If everything went well, the object should shrink to oblivion. Repeat this process for all remaining mouth shapes. So B through X. Of course, to avoid any confusion, you should name each object's shape keys accordingly. Go back to object mode, make sure everything's deselected and add an armature. Move the bone to the side, go into edit mode and duplicate it 8 times. Go to the armature properties and under viewport display, check the names box. Name each bone after its respective mouth shape. We will now be using drivers to link each mouth shape's shape key to its respective bone. Select object A, go to its data properties, right click over the shape key value and select add driver. In the object field, select the armature and right under it select bone A. Set the type to averaged value. Take note of the driver value. You need to follow the exact same process for all remaining mouth shapes. I know it's tedious as hell, assuming that hell is tedious, but no pain, no gain. Now select your armature in object mode, press Ctrl plus A and apply all transforms. Go into pose mode. Select the A bone and set its X location value 
to minus whatever the driver value was. Now select all bones and add a new pose in the pose library. Name it A. Now press Alt plus G to bring the bone back to its original position. Repeat the same process for all remaining bones. Go down to Rhubarb Lip Sync and assign each pose to its respective mouth shape, if they've not been automatically assigned already. Set the start frame to 1 and load your audio file. Finally, hit the Rhubarb Lip Sync button. After a few seconds, assuming that everything went well, your timeline window should be filled with keyframes. However, there are still a couple of things that we need to do before we can check the final result. Open a video sequencer window and add your audio file, the same one that you loaded into Rhubarb just a few moments ago. Now go to the timeline window and set the end frame to the end of the audio. Finally, under the playback options, make sure that the sync mode is set to sync to audio. Hit the spacebar, but don't freak out by the result. Oh, hi there! So you're interested in automatic lip syncing for your voxel character? Well, if what you're trying to achieve looks like what you're watching right now, then I may be able to help you out. There's still one more step before we're done. With all the keyframes selected, right-click on the timeline window and set the interpolation mode to constant. Now you can render the result. Oh, hi there! So you're interested in automatic lip-syncing for your voxel character? Well, if what you're trying to achieve looks like what you're watching right now, then I may be able to help you out. All you need to do is to keep watching this video. And now to actually place the mouth on our model. I have imported voxel ectelion into Blender using the last technique from one of my previous tutorials. If you're not sure how to do this, be sure to check it out. Select the character model and add a new material. Let's call it mouth. Now go into edit mode. Press 3 to select faces and select all the faces of the mouth area. Select the mouth material and click on assign. Go to the Shading tab. With the Mouth Material selected, go to Add, Texture, Image Sequence. Select all the images that you rendered before. In the new node that has just appeared, set the interpolation to Closest and check the Auto Refresh box. Add the Mix RGB node. Link the Alpha output to the Factor input and the Color output to the Color 2 input. Now select a face from your skin and copy the color hex code from that material. Go back to the mouth material and paste that hex code to the mix notes color 1 value. Finally, link the mix notes color output to the principal BSDF's base color input. Go to the UV editing tab and with your model in edit mode, select all the faces on his mouth area. Press U and select unwrap. On the UV editor, select all the vertices and move the planes so that the mouth is centered properly. We're practically done. Let's add the audio file like we did before to test it out. Oh, hi there! So you're interested in automatic lip syncing for your voxel character? Well, if what you're trying to achieve looks like what you're watching right now, then I may be able to help you out. All you need to do is to keep watching this video. You can pick the exact time when the image sequence starts to play by adjusting the start frame value in the image sequence node. However, this poses a problem. If, for example, we set the start frame to 100, then instead of the image texture, we get this pink color. We can fix this by setting the offset to 1. However, this way we only transfer the problem to after the last frame of the image sequence. The only workaround I was able to figure out for this situation is this. Set the offset to 1 and then go exactly one frame before the material turns pink. Set a keyframe for the offset value by pressing I over it. Then move one frame forward, change the offset to minus one and set a keyframe again. And voila, problem solved. I realize that there may be a proper solution for this, but I couldn't figure it out. If you have any suggestions, feel free to let me know in the comments. And that's it. If you found this video useful, please consider LCSSing. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.